Hello! In this video I want to talk about the short story The Cartographer Wasps and the Anarchist Bees by E. Lily Yu. Uh, and as usual, we're going to start off with a passage from the story. And this story is full of great passages, so I had a hard time picking one, but I thought this is a good one to kind of start us off with. Govern us, they said to the two wasp-taught anarchists, but they refused. A perfect society needs no rulers, they said. Knowledge and authority ought to be held in common. In order to imagine a new existence, we must free ourselves from the structures of both our failed government and the unjustifiable hegemony of the wasp nests. Hear what you can hear and learn what you can learn while we remain among them. But be ready. So this story is going to be a little tough to follow. Um, I want you first off to know that this is speculative fiction, and we'll talk more about that later on. Um, but the the wasps, uh, it's it's told in almost a fairy tale like style, if that helps you think about it as we go through it. And again, as always, I strongly recommend you read the stories before. Um, you can do it after these videos if you want, but I recommend reading the story before. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into a quick summary. What is this story about? So The Cartographer Wasps and the Anarchist Bees by E. Lily Yu is a speculative fiction short story about a society of intelligent wasps coming to rule over an intelligent group of bees. The wasps initially lived quietly along the edges of a human village. Yet, one day, a young boy cruelly tosses a stone at one of the wasps' paper nests and discovers, by accident, that the nest can unfold to show a perfect map of the surrounding area. After this discovery, villagers chase the wasps away by opening nest after nest after nest. And these wa map-making wasps flee south and settle in a new area with bees already living there. The wasps, having learned ruthlessness from the villagers, conquer the bees by force, subjugating them, making them slaves and serfs of the bees, as the queen bee quickly gives in to the wasps' demands. Pheromones communicate additional terms of the treaty between the two, and one of these treaty uh, terms, bees are to give up a portion of their young to be raised by the cartographer wasp, the map-making wasps, training the bees to read and write and assist in the serfdom of their own people. By sheer luck, Quote, one of the bees trained as a cartographer's assistant is an anarchist, unquote. The first anarchist bee secretly whispers to her sons that, quote, there should be no queen and no state, and that, as in the wasp nest, the male should labor and profit equally with the females, unquote. Slowly, the anarchist's be anarchist beliefs are inherited throughout a portion of the beehive. These anarchist bees then secretly leave the old colony to form a new colony following their beliefs. The seasons pass by, and the anarchists have gathered food and built their own hive, and even a new uncrowned queen doing manual labor. The last we hear them, they're sealing up the hive, storing food, and keeping each other warm as winter approaches. Meanwhile, a human college student returning to their village, the original village we're talking about, hears about the wasp-made maps. While the wasps lay dormant through the winter, she tracks down the final nest and begs it up to be shipped off to the Academy of Sciences to be studied by the government for warfare. For the old bee colony, they wake up that spring to find the wasps miraculously gone. Immediately, the old structure of the beehive returns with the queen rebuilding her kingdom and adding new bees to keep guard on the borders. However, one of these bees finds the remains of the anarchist colony, and we're left with a haunting image of the mysteriously gnawed out and emptied hive. All that's left of the anarchist colony are the writings of the anarchists, suggesting that these scouts from the original colony will carry anarchism back to the old traditional colony. So let's hop into the notes right away. To understand the story, we first need to clarify a key word, anarchism. Anarchism has different meanings based on the context and has been interpreted in many ways. If whenever people use this term, you always want to kind of narrow down what it is they're talking about because it's a term that's misunderstood and misused and used in so many different contexts, right? So first off, there's the pop culture use of the word suggesting chaos, punk music, things like that. Then there's the political anarchist movement, which had its most notable moment during the Spanish Civil War, fighting alongside left-leaning groups against the fascists. And there's also anarchism as a philosophy, which seeks to remove unjust hierarchies across personal and economic spheres. The anarchist bees of the story fall more towards the philosophical use of the word, rather than matching one-to-one -one with either real-world anarchist movements or the pop culture definition. 
A second element of understanding the story is why it's categorized as speculative fiction and sometimes as science fiction. The story is inspired by real-world scientific phenomena known as colony collapse disorder. This is caused by a number of events and is marked by bees not producing honey and abandoning their queen or ignoring their queen. Basically, structure kind of falling apart within the hive. And while we're never given a reason in the story for the intelligence of either the wasps or the bees, the story is still rooted in scientific phenomena and extrapolates on it like all great science fiction. So if someone ever tells you science fiction needs to have um, ray guns and aliens, this is a great story to point to and be like, no, we have a scientific core to the story. We have all these interesting ideas being explored. It's a great example of kind of the, the limits of scientific or, or science fiction or speculative fiction, if you want to use that term instead. So let's get into our big question for this story. What do you make of the ending? Is it an inspiring ending, signaling that the values of equality will carry on? Or is it something else? Is it suggesting that the ideas in the story are faulty in some way? As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.